Hi, welcome back to the Library Show. I'm Paul Morrow. I'm the producer of the Library Show. It's rare when I get a chance to get in front of the camera, but today we have a very special guest, Howard Fritzen, who is a children's illustrator and author. Howard, welcome to the show. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to I'm have you. Very happy to be here. Thanks. Uh, I had a class recently for with children's literature, and Howard came to the class, and he told us a lot about illustrating children's books and writing children's books. So we're going to learn a little bit about Howard, and he's going to show us some great drawings, and it's going to be great. So Howard, let's start with your history and perhaps how you started getting into drawing and at an early age, or what's, what's your kind of career path here? Well, I always enjoyed drawing, and I um, hope there's no uh, kids listening. I used <laughs> to draw in class instead of taking <laughs> notes, and sometimes I would draw pictures of my teachers and get in <laughs> trouble. But I always uh, enjoyed it. I had uh, comic strips in school and um, went to Wayne's Art School, which is a very good department. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I started painting murals and doing other kinds of various kinds of artwork okay. and um, at some point got into some illustration and I really enjoy that. It's nice to work on something large like the size of a wall, okay. but it's also nice to work on something that you can finish in one day. Mm -hmm. So uh, I enjoy both forms. Now when you were doing illustrating, Howard, was it for like an advertising agency or was it just illustrations? What kind of illustrations were you doing? I've done lots of different things. I've done things for magazines, um, all freelance, sometimes cartoons for things, and okay. people find me somehow <laughs> and ask me to do it, and I like the variety. Okay. So let's talk about the children's books and how you started illustrating that. What was your first book that you ever worked on as an illustrator for a children's book? Well, I did some educational material, and uh, from there I started writing some stories and maybe doing one illustration, and the first book I actually wrote and illustrated was Our Family Treasure. Mm -hmm. It was about my aunt. She had a 75th birthday, and I wanted to write a story and do a little picture for it, mm -hmm. and I read it at her party, and she got a little teary-eyed, <laughs> and uh, she said, Howard, you should make this into a book, and mm -hmm. I thought to myself, <laughs> well, um, you know, I did one illustration and mm -hmm. a book is 20 illustrations yeah. or more, but I loved my aunt and I started working on it. Mm -hmm. I love that when you came to the class, you told that story that you only had one illustration, but you built the whole story already. Um, so yeah, then you had to come up with all the rest of the illustrations. So yeah, there was a lot of, you know, it's probably a little more work than you thought when you agreed to do that. <laughs> well, it took some time and um, so I uh, took some liberties and made it my son Russell's aunt instead of my aunt because okay. my son Russell was cuter than yeah. I was <laughs> and spent a lot of time working on it. And when I started, Russell was four years old. Okay. And when I finished, Russell was 14 <laughs> years old. And I asked him if I could make this into a mm -hmm. book, if that was okay with him. And 14 years old, he was a little nervous yeah. about that. He says. Does it all have to be about yeah, me? It's social media now. He doesn't. <laughs> what if it goes viral? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I let him think about it for a while, and he was okay with it at some point. Meanwhile, the little girl in the book is the little girl who lived next door to us. Okay. Her name is Lindsay, and when I told Lindsay, she was really excited about it. So oh, she yeah. was very happy to be in the book. Yeah. But. Well, we're gonna have more about uh, that book. Howard's actually gonna read that book to us. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about it because the illustrations in that book are really something. So, But we're going to save that one, and Howard's going to give a special reading to us. But let's talk, Howard, about some of the other books. One of the books I know uh, you talked about was the, the Animal's Great Football Game. And there were some cool illustrations in that. So how did that book come about? Well, I have a friend who, he's a, a child psychiatrist, oh, okay. but he uh, writes and writes funny songs and cool. sings and wrote this story and uh, called me up to ask if I would illustrate it. And of course, I was very excited. <laughs> and the best part was getting together with lunch uh, with him <laughs> to talk about it. And we worked on it together and uh, I spent a lot of time on that one too. Uh, 
uh, had some local success. You know, Howard, when you went to the class, you talked about, you know, you had a very close collaboration with the author on that story, but sometimes the illustrator and the author don't really have a lot of collaboration at all. So why don't you talk about a situation like that when maybe you have a little more freedom or how do you work in that case? Well, I think communication is good. So the mm -hmm. best scenario is to actually be able to talk to the author. But I know uh, another author who had an illustrator that her publisher provided for her mm -hmm. who lived in Romania and she never met him. She <laughs> couldn't speak the same <laughs> language, but somehow the illustrations came out great, so anything can work. There's a certain uh, certain a matter of trust in that point where you're just hoping that the person, but did they even have a copy of the story that they were able to Oh, sure, the story? they had okay. the story and they had direction from the publisher, okay. but um, I'll tell you, sometimes authors are uh, a little difficult to work with <laughs> and the publisher in, a, in the, um, interest of avoiding problems keeps it separate that way okay. and um, the author doesn't always uh, get a lot of choice about uh, how the illustrations are done or who does them or I think the illustrations are important especially for the cover a lot of times people browsing books they look at the cover and that's what's gonna suck them in so I think a good illustration, even if it may not be aligned with the story, would trump it. I'd want something splashy and nice too, and I'm sure the cover, you know, the, the Great Animals football game, is, it's got a great cover. Well, I like to pay extra attention to the cover. I always mm -hmm. um, put more detail, and I like to spend a lot of time, and because um, I know that is what people will see first. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the medium, Howard. I was very impressed with that your medium, well I'm sure you dabble in a lot of mediums, but most of your medium is colored pencil. And the amount of detail you get is astounding. So why don't you talk about the mediums that you like and especially your colored pencil. Well I had one instructor in art school who was the Leonardo of <laughs> colored pencil. I, I could never approach his talent. Now who was that? His name was John Haggerty. Okay. And, uh, but I was always uh, really interested okay. just seeing the beautiful things he could do. And uh, sometimes I paint, sometimes um, I use pen and ink. Okay. Uh, but um, for the last few books, I've, I've liked the uh, color choices I get with colored pencil and uh, it's very satisfying. Okay. Now let's talk about this, Howard. I know, uh, again, you came to our class and gave us a wonderful presentation, and you like to do that. I know you like to go to schools and libraries, and recently you had a chance to go back to your elementary school and do a presentation there. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, that was uh, a great honor. Um, I went back to the library for Literacy Week, okay. and I actually talked to one class first, and then they had a program after school for parents and students oh, okay. and um, I uh, walked around the library and found some books that I had read in the okay. fourth grade. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And, and what school was it, Howard? Where'd it's you go James Verner Elementary School. Okay. It's in Detroit. It's not actually too far from where I live now. I think okay. I could ride my bike. Did you ride your bike? <laughs> <laughs> I did until um, I had an incident with a teacher and she got my bike permit taken away. So. No, really? <laughs> so what, um, what are some of the things that the kids ask you or, or like to see when you go to these presentations? Well, there are a lot of things going on in kids' minds when <laughs> I am speaking and only one of those things is what I am speaking about. So sometimes they ask questions about drawing or about how books get made, or sometimes they ask completely different <laughs> questions. One kid asked me, so who's your favorite basketball player? <laughs> so I thought for a minute and I said, well, when I was your age, it was Dave Bing. Does oh. anybody know what happened to him? And some of the kids in the class knew that he wow. became the mayor of Detroit. Wow, so okay. It was a Gives teaching me hope for moment. the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, you never know what's gonna come out of kids' mouths a lot of times when I'd see presentations and the kids would raise their hand, my wife who's a teacher would say, is this a question or a story? Because <laughs> a lot of times they don't have a question, but they're gonna tell you all about their sister's cat and they got a great story. So, well Howard, we wanna talk a little bit more about our family treasure, 
but we we don't want to talk too much about it until we have you read the story. So to anyone out there, this is a spoiler alert. Howard is going to read Our Family Treasure, and it does have a little hook in it. So we're going to let Howard read the book, and it's going to be great. And then we're going to show you all the wonderful illustrations of the book. And then when we come back, Howard's going to sit here with the actual storyboards, and we can talk and look at the storyboards, and you can kind of tell us like the creative process when you did it. So uh, it, right now we're going to listen to Howard read his story. It's right here. It's Our Family Treasure. And then when we come back, we'll learn more about it. Our Family Treasure, Story and Drawings by Howard Fridson. Bing bong, chimed Russell's doorbell one day, just as he was tying his shoes. Want to come over, his friend Lindsay asked when Russell opened the front door. My mom's baking cookies. Can't, Russell replied. Today's the day I'm going to see our family treasure. Really? Lindsay's eyes opened wide. Could I go too? So, Russell's mom called Lindsay's mom, and everyone decided it would be all right. Soon the two treasure hunters were on their way. Don't we need a map or something, Lindsay wanted to know as Russell took the lead? I don't think so, he laughed. I've been there lots of times. Then why didn't you dig it up before? Shouldn't we have a shovel? What kind of a treasure is it? Russell just smiled and said, you'll see. Is it a buried treasure, Lindsay demanded? Who buried it? Is it like a pirate treasure? Not really, Russell giggled, except maybe for an earring. Some girls were playing in their yard. We're hunting for treasure, Lindsay called out. Want to help? Sorry, said a little girl with a long ponytail, but I'm announcing an important World Cup match. That's exciting, admitted Russell. He spotted a plastic mug. Are you selling lemonade too? No, silly, answered the little girl. That's the World Cup. Where are you off to, Lindsay? Some big kids wanted to know. We're going to see Russell's family treasure, she told them. Ha! Russell doesn't have any treasure, a freckle-faced boy scoffed. Oh, yes, I do, Russell replied. But the boys were already gone. Big kids think they know everything. Soon, the children came to a huge building with lots of windows. Here we are, Russell beamed. Lindsay was astonished. You hid your treasure in an apartment building, she cried. I didn't say it was hidden, Russell laughed again. You're making fun of me, Lindsay scolded. What kind of a treasure could you keep in an apartment building? Lindsay guessed on the way up in the elevator. Is it in a safe? Is the combination a secret? Is it stashed behind a painting so burglars can't find it? Cool your jets, said Russell. We'll be there in a minute. Russell knocked at a door. Coming, sang a voice from inside. The door opened. It was Russell's Aunt Elsie. Russell, my dear, the lady said with a smile. Every time I see you, why, you've grown another inch. Give me a big hug. And you must be Lindsay. What a pretty name. It means soft-spoken, doesn't it? Why don't you show your friend around, Russell? I was just getting out some construction paper. Aunt Elsie opened a closet door. Inside were boxes and boxes all labeled fabric or beads or dried flowers or old stamps. Russell took Lindsay to Aunt Elsie's workroom. Is the treasure in here, Lindsay whispered? Not yet, Russell whispered back. But Lindsay was already lost in wonder. Aunt Elsie's workroom was full of projects, flower pots and picture frames, bits of yarn and scraps of felt, boxes filled with magazines and necklaces strung with charms. There was a doll's house in a fish tank, complete with tiny paintings and miniature furniture. Where's the fish, Lindsay wanted to know. It's in there if you look closely, Russell pointed out. Sure enough, there, on a tiny table, in a tiny fish bowl, swam a tiny make-believe goldfish. Where does she get all of this stuff, Lindsay asked. Here and there, my dear, Aunt Elsie said, entering the room. Here and there. Would you like to cut out a square dance, Russell's aunt offered. 
I don't know if I can, said Lindsay. It's easy, Aunt Elsie smiled, just watch. She folded a piece of paper in half three times and carefully handed a pair of scissors to Lindsay. I'll show you where to cut. Snip, snip, snip. How did I do that, Lindsay gasped when she unfolded the paper. My Aunt Elsie can make anything, Russell added proudly. All afternoon, the children strung beads and folded origami and colored with pencils and cut pictures out of magazines. Aunt Elsie even let Lindsay rearrange the furniture in her fish tank dollhouse. When it was time to go back home, everyone helped clean up. Then both children gave Aunt Elsie a big hug. On her way out the door, Lindsay stopped short. Forget something, Aunt Elsie asked, looking around. No, said Lindsay slowly. It's just that Russell promised I could see his family treasure. Well, said Russell, you just met her. Aunt Elsie smiled again and brushed away a little tear. Hurry home, my dear, she said. You don't want to be late for supper. When the children were back outside, Lindsay laughed at Russell's joke. You fooled me, she said with a little push. I didn't think a person could be a treasure. Russell shrugged. I was only telling the truth, he said. Hey, did I ever tell you about my great-grandfather, the alien? Okay, we're back now. Howard, thanks again for reading the story to us. And now that you've heard the story and you know who the greatest treasure is, we're going to talk to Howard a little bit about the storyboards he has here of the actual illustrations and kind of the creative process. So Howard, maybe you can lead us through some of the illustrations and tell us how you came, you know, how you got the idea. Because I know you can illustrate pretty much any part of the story you want, so how do you choose like what part to illustrate? Well, my uh, favorite part about illustrating is the research that goes into it. So here's a good example. I have Russell sitting on the stairs tying his shoes. <laughs> And uh, to do this, I tied my shoes about a thousand times <laughs> and figured out exactly what happened. So um, this is uh, a real fun part of uh, illustration. I tried to have some imagination on every page. So uh, on, in this one, Lindsay is imagining a pirate treasure map. And so I always instruct the kids in classes that I'm speaking to to look for the imagination on every page. And there is, there's so much going on in this picture, how you have a frog in the pond and there's a rabbit peeking behind the stump and there's other creatures in the background and there's the big X that Lindsay is digging up and the, there's just so much detail there and I just know it'd be so easy to just, just turn to the next page and, and miss a lot of that. Well, that's what happens when you don't give yourself a deadline. <laughs> I get carried away with detail. Oh, it's great though, Howard. It looks great. I love that. I love the blue in the background and the kind of ghosty look of it. It's awesome. So uh, here the imagination would be what you see in the clouds. And I know we have all seen shapes in the clouds. And here the kids see a pirate ship. Mm -hmm. um, here's great. some make-believe about um, a World Cup match. Mm -hmm. Very topical right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I wanted to show the book that I spent my, the illustration, I'm sorry, that I spent most of my time on. Oh yeah, on. you talked about this in class and this was very interesting. Um, again, the detail is just phenomenal, Howard, with just the colored pencil. I, I never realized how well you could blend that medium and just all the detail and the different shading techniques you have. Yeah, this is probably my favorite illustration too. So here mm -hmm. is my Aunt Elsie's workroom, <laughs> and she had a chair that had a pattern awesome. of <laughs> leaves in all different colors on it, and I made up my mind I was <laughs> going to recreate that chair, and so I probably spent <laughs> a week just on the chair alone. This drawing took the most out of all the drawings. But in there's the book. just again so much going on. You got King Kong. I love the illustration of this big airplane and the space shuttle. And there's just the leaves in the background. And yeah, the leaves on and just your your aunt's earrings. There's just so much detail in there. How it's just amazing. Well, how I long do you think, Howard? In hours. I mean, I don't want to hold you to this, but how long do <laughs> you think it took you to to draw and illustrate just that one board? 
I spent um, a couple weeks just wow. on this one page. It's amazing. So. It's amazing, so. but it looks like it. You can tell there's a lot of time. And even his shoe and the laces, it's great. It's just awesome. I love this too, Howard, when you use the flash. A couple times in the book, like on the cover, you have like this flashlight effect where you have the yellow light kind of cutting through and you see the color only in the yellow. I just really like that effect. That's well, really there's neat. an interesting story about this illustration. Would you like to Yo, hear Oh, of course. This is why we're here. <laughs> when I was in the sixth grade, I had an art teacher and the art teacher uh, got all of the kids into a program. It was an international program. They had children in the United States and children in Russia. And we were going to create posters that were gonna go to Russia. Oh. And the Russian kids were gonna create posters that came to the United wow. States. Well, I drew this one with a burglar and his light and everyone, all the words were in the uh, arc of the light. So you could read all the words. And okay. my teacher really liked it. Okay. He said, this is really great, Howard, but if we send this to Russia, they'll think that everybody here is a criminal <laughs> and he wouldn't use it. And I was really angry because I worked really hard on it. But I decided someday I would get a chance to use that idea, so here it is. Wow, and it looks great. See, you did get a chance to repurpose it. I don't know if I agree with that teacher that. <laughs> That's a pretty broad statement. <laughs> so well, show me some other illustration. Now, d did your aunt get a chance to see this book, Howard? She did. Okay. Um, what was her reaction when she saw the whole book all illustrated? Well, <laughs> I would say... <laughs> She got a little <laughs> tear in her eye, as on this page, so I got to uh, do this from real life. Um, I, I really enjoyed working with my aunt's face and my mm. son's face and Lindsay's face next door because I wanted to capture some real expressions. We have an expression in our family called the Elsie face <laughs> that only my Aunt Elsie could make. <laughs> and coincidentally, Russell is the only other person in who our family make, yes. who could make that face. And so they both had the same expression. I had to <laughs> capture that, and I hope I, I did it, but I cannot make that face that is so with funny. my own mouth. And I'm sure Lindsay, was. Well, she looks like she has her tongue out concentrating on her cutting there. Oh, so. yeah. Now, did you use photographs for this, Howard, or was it just from memory? Obviously, your son and your aunt, but like, what about Lindsay? Did you just know her well enough from having her? Lindsay spent a lot of time <laughs> at our house. So she was so, like the adopted child. <laughs> uh, I still remember when Lindsay moved in, the first time she came running up the steps and knocked on our door, and it really looks like that first page in the book. So. And I know she has green eyes because in the, all the illustrations she has green eyes. So. <laughs> she does. So yeah. Howard, what um, what your, was this one of your favorite? Obviously, one of your probably one of your favorite projects because you got a chance to write and illustrate the book. Right. Um, people talk about having uh, a boss that they get along with, and mm -hmm. so that actually happened in this case. I got along with myself very well on this one, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I found it fascinating, although I, I really enjoy working with other authors as mm -hmm. well. Well, let's talk about one other book, too, that um, really was a personal one for me. Uh, what was the one with the with the dog, Rose for? Oh, Maya's, Maya's First, first Rose. Rose. And I just lost my dog in April, so I know we had talked about that. And why don't you tell people a little bit about that book, because that's kind of a special book, too, and that's kind of a special story. Well, I have a friend named Marty Cousins. I met him working on that book. Mm -hmm. He had a dog for many years, and when it got old and passed away, he took time off from his career mm -hmm. to take care of uh, his dog in her last days and wrote a book about it. Mm -hmm. And Marty's sister introduced us, and uh, we decided it was kind of a heavy topic and mm -hmm. we, it needed a little lightening up with some illustrations. Mm -hmm. So I was the guy for that job, okay. and um, we had some great local success. We were number one in the Detroit area mm -hmm. and uh, got picked up by Random House Books, and for a, a brief time, I could get off the plane in any city and find my book in a, in a, a bookstore. It was really Now, I'm sure the weird. illustrations for that book were much different than a story like this. Um, Those were pen and ink. Right. 
Mm -hmm. So, nice. and was that the first book that you actually illustrated, Howard, or was that? Well, uh, besides the educational material, okay. uh, that was the first one that was uh, actually available in stores. Okay. <laughs> now, what about future projects, Howard? Are you working on any illustrations now for any books, or what I'm, are you doing now? I'm. I just finished a book, and I'm. Uh, talking over uh, the author with some finishing touches we have to do. I always uh, want the author to have the last word. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so that'll be out sometime soon. That is called uh, Pizza With Everything. Oh, okay. And uh, it's by Larry Lawson. And um, I have a couple other projects in the works, but not on the drawing board okay. yet, as they say. Okay, and and if, lucky for us uh, here in Shelby Township, Howard is gracious enough to donate our family treasure. So now you can go to the Shelby Library and get this book and out yourself and take it home and look at it and get a chance to really study those illustrations, especially this wonderful chair. <laughs> I'd love to say something about sure, that. My sure. Aunt Elsie, who is a character in this book, uh, was very fond of libraries. She would take my brother and me to the library every week during the summer and make us pick out a <laughs> stack of books. So part of my mission is to get this book into as many libraries as possible. Okay. So here's an opportunity for me in right. Shelby Township. And I know the residents of Shelby, they're voracious readers here. It's great. So I guarantee you this book will be dog-eared and worn out in just a few years. That's a good thing. All right. So Howard, thanks again for coming to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, folks, remember, you come to the library and check out Howard's book, and uh, maybe in the future, Howard, you can come back to the library and do a presentation for us or something. I would love to. Okay, great. Well, folks, thanks for watching the library show, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>